In this video, I'm going to show you how to link your Samsung Smart TV with Alexa in the updated SmartThings app. Stick around. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another tutorial. So a ways back, I released a video on how to link your Samsung Smart TV within the Alexa Home uh, system. Now at the time, we had pretty limited control. I have a 2018 model, so I was virtually only able to turn the TV on and off. Here we are today, Samsung has updated the SmartThings app and has given us a bit more control. And so this does work with TVs 2018 or newer. If you do want to know a little bit more information about what level of integration your TV has, here is a link that I will post down in the description that will take you on over to Samsung's website so you can check out that information and point you in the right direction. In any case, before we do begin, if you did have any of this set up before, I would highly recommend removing the skill and uh, delinking the accounts. And then I would also recommend removing your TV from the SmartThings app so we can kind of start with a clean slate. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. To get started, I highly recommend connecting your TV to a wireless network instead of wired, just because with wireless, the connection stays active and you can use the on commands in order to, to turn the TV on versus with wired, ethernet port turns off and it no longer responds. Now, once you have the TV connected to the wireless network, head on into the SmartThings app. Just verify that is all the way up to date. We are using version 1.7.54 0.21 at the time of this video. So make sure that your app is updated and you're using smart things, not smart things classic. Now going back, you may need to go through and set up a smart things account if you haven't already done so. I've already gone through that process. You'll want to set up that account, set up your home and all of the initial steps and then it will take you to the home screen which is what you see right now. To add a device, all you need to do is tap on the little plus sign right here. Choose on device or click on tap on device. If you have a QR, a QR code, you can try to scan with a QR code. You can try to scan nearby. Both of those options, at least for me, didn't work very well. So I just would choose the item or the device from the list. So I'm just going to tap on TV and then tap on Samsung. Certified in United States, there is a chance that there might be some regional lockout if you don't see anything here. But there is also a button that you can tap on that says supported devices if you need a little bit more information about which devices are supported in the SmartThings app. So we're going to tap on TV, getting things ready. Let's get started with your TV. We'll tap start. Location, we're just going to leave the default my home master. I'm going to choose living room. If you want to add something custom, you can tap on where it says add new room. So I'm going to do living room and then tap on next in the bottom right. Turn on your TV using the remote control. Get help if you can't find your device below. TV is currently on and we'll just wait for these two to talk to each other and see if it will give us a pin code. Once the device has been found on the network, you can see that it found TV Challenger. Yours might be named whatever default it did from the factory or if you've renamed it. That should show up here. In any case, tap the, the device and it says connecting to your TV and then check the pin shown on your TV, then enter it below. Hard to see in the top right hand corner just because it's out of focus, but there is a pin code in the top right corner of the TV that you need to punch in to the TV or into the phone. So we're just gonna do 0428. Once you've got the code typed in there, just tap done in the bottom right hand corner and done one more time. Almost there, your TV is being registered to your Samsung account. Successfully connected my home living room. This is where you can either keep the name of the TV or you can certainly change it. In this case, I'm going to change this to living room. Once you've got that there, your name in there, tap done. And we've successfully added it into the SmartThings app. Now that we've done that, we are going to need to link the SmartThings with the Alexa app using the SmartThings skill in Alexa. So what you're gonna need to do is of course, if you haven't gone through and enabled or downloaded the Alexa app, you will need to grab that from the Play Store or the App Store. If we go on onto the Alexa app, you're gonna to want to either click on where it says browse skills right here, or you're gonna tap down in the bottom right hand corner where it says more. And then you're gonna to wanna to tap where it says skills and games. From here, we're under the discover, but if you click on the little magnifying glass up in the top right hand corner, you're gonna tap on that and type in smart things. It's a very commonly search, so it should show up in the list. If not, just continue typing things in, smart things. And you're gonna want the one that says smart things. Again, not smart things classic. So tap on smart things. Now, account linking is required in order to do this. So you're gonna tap on where it says enable to use. And then it's gonna bring you this prompt where you're gonna to want to sign in with the Samsung account that you used in order to add the TV to your SmartThings app. You do need to use the same account in order for the devices to sync over to the app. So sign in with Samsung account. 
You're gonna wanna punch that information in once it loads. Once you've got your credentials for the SmartThings app in there, you're gonna want to click on where it says authorized to allow Amazon Alexa to access all of your locations, devices, and scenes, because everything's gonna be synced together as far as these two apps are concerned. So go ahead and tap on authorize. Your SmartThings account has been successfully linked. What to do next? Close this window to discover smart home devices you can control with Alexa. So we'll click on close. And then it's gonna bring up this window where you can tap on discover devices and it can take up to 45 seconds in order for it to detect the device. If for any reason at the end of it, it doesn't uh, discover the device, you may want to uh, de-link everything, remove everything and just try the setup process again to see if something maybe errored out in between but we'll wait for this to finish up and see if she was able to find uh, the living room TV. Perfect, so she did find the TV. It says one TV found and connected. Your TV has been added to your Alexa account. Next, continue setting up your device. So now you can control the device just like any other smart device and organize it as well. So we'll click on set up device, add your TV to a group. If you wanted to add it to a group, you can do so at this time. I'm just gonna tap skip. Living room TV is set up and ready to use. To control it, say so-and-so, turn on living room TV. So we're gonna go ahead and click done. So now that is all set up, you can go ahead and give it a try. So we'll say, Alexa, turn off living room TV. Alexa, turn on living room TV. Alexa, set volume to 40 on living room TV. Alexa, change to HDMI 1. So as you can see, I have a little bit more control on what I can do. If you watched the video previously, you knew I could only turn the TV on and off. I didn't even have control over like volumes or inputs or channels or anything like that. So with them updating the SmartThings app on this 2018, I'm able to do those things. Although with a 2018, I still cannot launch the apps. That must be a 2019 or newer um, feature, but at least we're moving in the right direction. This does give a little bit more control over some of the older models. Again, I will leave that link in the video description of the supported models or the level of integrations that these have. So you can check that out to see if your TV is in that list and what it can and can't control. And that is all there is to it. It's a pretty smooth and streamlined process. At least that's what it feels like from the last time we've gone through and uh, linked these two systems together. Anyways, guys, that is going to wrap it up for this week's tutorial. Thank you guys all so much for watching. I hope you guys liked it and you were able to get yours all linked together. And if you did, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And of course, head on over to shop.helpcloud.com where you can view our merch lineup and we will see you on the next one. Peace.